Alright, guys. For the billionth time, we have an awesome Watermoon Wave developer's message. Uh, essentially, we've had a new dev message regarding Watermoon Waves and the upcoming 1.4 version. I'm going to go over everything pretty quickly because I don't want to reread absolutely everything here. So I'm just going to get you the short version of what's going on. First and foremost, we are getting some new combat mechanics, uh, new features, and a lot of optimization. The first thing I want to talk about, obviously, is going to be the new combat mechanic called Dream Link. This is a mechanism that will be available during the main event of version 1.4. So during the main event, you'll be able to use something called Dream Link, which will activate specifically when some conditions are aligned while in combat. It will dramatically amplify your team's combat prowesses. Now, the problem here, the quote-unquote problem, is that we don't have any kind of information. How do you activate it? Is it character-wise? Is it team-wise? Do you have to have a specific team composition? Is it just like all your characters need to have their max energy? We don't know. I wish we had a bit more information. But on paper, this is kind of cool. This reminds me of like the Astral Op in Honkai Back 3rd. Stuff like that. We seem to have a lot of the characters here doing some coordinated attack. It sounds very cool. Um, and yeah, there we go. Now we have another feature uh, that's going to be here in the game, which is called Overdrive uh, Combat the Elusive Sprint. You can see here you're able to pick up the white paws, which is from the cats. Um, the white cat right in the Elusive Realm does the Elusive Sprints. And you can go very, very fast and use dash, that dash to jump into and attack the enemy for a lot of damage it seems and obviously the new character called Lumi which is this girl here she looks like a mouse she has a cute little tail with a light bow by the end which is very adorable she also has a little mice like following her here it's very very cute I like her a lot and she has this special dash instead of doing a dodge she just starts running very fast so she's kind of like Sanic if she if Sanic was a what a mice or a mouse instead of a hedgehog and that's pretty cool. Now, that said, those two mechanics are not mechanics or features that will be available in the game forever. Um, well, they will be, but not in the entirety of the game. Those two features will be available in the main event. This main event, once it ends, will actually be added as a permanent event. So essentially, the way I get it is that once the update comes live, we'll get the event. We're probably going to get some permanent reward from it as well as some time reward. Once the event is over, like in other games of the sort where they add permanence, you'll be able to still access it, but you probably won't be able to get the timed limited rewards, but you can still get the main uh, stuff that you can get from the event if there's like any customization and stuff like that, right? So you'll be able to use this special dash as well as the dream link, but this is not a new mechanic for the entirety of the game, okay? Uh, that said, it's still pretty cool. It's nice to see them trying new stuff, and maybe that means that this will be implemented in the future in one way or another, if it's, you know, if people like it, essentially. Moving on to another new feature, which is going to be the weapon cosmetic. It's called the weapon projection. So essentially, the way this works, it's, it's a lot of text to tell you that essentially, uh, while playing through events and the elusive realm, you'll be able to get some new weapon projections, which are essentially skins for your weapon. So here you can see this is the, the event skin, and then this is the normal weapon, and you can also have an invisible weapon projection. So you can choose to have your weapon be fully invisible, partially invisible, or just have a cosmetic skin on top of it. What we don't know here, because they haven't talked about it, is whether or not you have the weapon projection of other weapons you own, because that would be awesome. Let's say you get the signature weapon for Chingli, and you want to use the skin for your rover, even though he's not equipping the weapon. That would be awesome if you had the option to do that. Like Glamour or any kind of stuff like in Final Fantasy XIV or World of Warcraft or any other game that allow this kind of customization. I hope that's the case, but they haven't said anything about that. So right now, it seems to potentially be only limited to stuff you can unlock specifically through events and other game modes and not for all the weapons in the game. I hope this gets changed in the future, or that they simply omitted that detail here. Still, pretty cool. That's nice, right? 
Now, moving on, we also have some optimization and there's some really cool stuff in here. So first of all, we have the option to actually spend twice the amount of uh, wave plate the stamina of the game when you're clearing some uh, specific um, combats like the forgery uh, challenge, simulation challenges or the tacit suppressions, right? So this is this doesn't really increase the amount of reward you get overall. It's just that you can spend faster. So either you use 60 and you get the reward for one clear or you spend 120 and you get the reward for two clears. Uh, this is essentially the same system that Genshin has for with like the condensed resin. You can craft condensed resin with the stamina and then you can use them and you get double the reward. Except that here it's more convenient because you don't have to do any crafting. It's just something you can do, which means that you will be able to get more reward faster so essentially, you can just spend your stamina faster and thus using uh, eats and completing your dailies faster, which is nice. Um, and it's also nice that obviously you have the choice between using it or not. Great. Moving on, we also have a more efficient way to actually uh, level up your echoes. So here we are going to get some new settings for the auto select. So instead of auto selecting automatically leveling up your echoes to level 25 which is the max level you have the option to set it up in a way that it will only level up your echoes to level 5 10 15 20 and 25 which is the new cap that will allow you to unlock a new substat so that way you can quickly get your car your echo to the next um threshold check the substat if it's not good you can stop there if it's good you can then go to the next threshold. This is very nice. And on top of that, you can also choose if you want only XP items or if you want to feed both XP items and echoes. This is just good quality of life that we've been expecting from Modern Wave at this point. And this is awesome. Now, additionally, those are a bit smaller quality of life. Well, this one is very small. When you log into the game, you can see your stamina on the main screen. Essentially, it saves you opening the map to see how much stamina you have, which is not massively significant, but it is certainly something. And finally, um, well, actually, there's two more things. One of them is the fact that when you loot a Echo on the overworld, it will show you the stat of the Echo. So you will see the main stat, the substat, the rarity, and the cost of the Echo, which is nice because that means you can directly see if you got a nice Echo or not. And then you can open the menu and lock it immediately if that's the case. Um, it's just nice. It makes the, the experience better. Finally, the one point I do want to go over is this one. Essentially, if you've played the Tower Adversity, which is kind of like the end game of the game, right? This is like the... This is the Shiyu defense. This is the... Um, Abyssal Tower, or whatever it's called in Genshin. This is the... The... the, the Apocalyptic Shadow or MOC. Uh, so it's called Tower Adversity, and there is a system where in the character selection screen, uh, you can't really change or adjust your lineup and their equipment easily once you're inside the tower and you start fighting. You need to get out of the tower, change your equipment, and then go in, which is kind of annoying. And here it will allow you to do so directly from within the tower without having to interrupt your gameplay experience, which is great. So overall, we get a bunch of new quality of life, which is great. Uh, they've really done a lot of work on the echo side of things, uh, just making using your stamina better, making farming for your echoes better, making upgrading your echoes better. Uh, and this is absolutely fantastic stuff, in my opinion. It's small things, but they really do add up eventually. Uh, we're also getting some new features with the cosmetic stuff, which is nice, and some cool new mechanics that we'll be able to use in the 1.4 update. On top of that, of course, while they have not like given specific details, we'll still be getting some double reward event and all that stuff to make sure that we have all the resources necessary to upgrade the new characters and all of that, because that has been a point of concern uh, from the players. So this is great. I'm looking forward to it. I'm very, very excited for the next patch because we're going to be getting Camellia as well as Lumi. And I've been in love with Camellia forever at this point, so I cannot wait to pull for her. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know which of these new um, updates has you the most excited for. Are you going to be pulling for any of the new characters? 
or are you saving for a future like uh, Scar, maybe, if he's ever playable? Let me a comment, leave me a comment down there, like, subscribe, all the good good, and you can catch me live on twitch.tv forward slash kittycathy. See you then. Bye!